Today, we'll cover Monte Carlo integration, starting with theory and then creating the two graphs shown here. Monte Carlo integration is a numerical approach to integrals. We ignore the analytical solution and we're going to use random points to estimate an integral. This is best seen with a visual. Here we see an equation y equals x squared. And we're interested in the integral of this equation from 0 to 10, which is simply the area under the curve. Monte Carlo asked, is there a better way to estimate this area? We might not get the perfect solution, but can we estimate this area enough to get a decent solution? He started by placing random dots on the graph. For example, a red dot here. We're coloring it red because it's above the curve, and we're interested in values that fall below the curve, which we color in blue. We add more dots, and we add more dots, 100 dots total. And note that these dots have a uniform randomness. There are 60 dots above the curve and 40 dots below the curve. But note that we're only interested in the dots below. As a percent or a ratio of the whole, we have 40 divided by 100 equals 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is the ratio of the dots under the curve versus the total dots seen here on the graph. This can be considered as 40% of the total region. But what region specifically? The Y values range from 0 to 100 and the X values range from 0 to 10. 40% of this becomes about 400. And that would be our Monte Carlo integral for this problem. Final notes, the integral is equal to the dots under the curve divided by the total dots times that area or region. This is an alternative approach to analytical approaches. It's a numerical method that gives a numerical solution, which may be close, but is not the actual analytical answer. This requires uniformly distributed random points, meaning values from 0 to 10 in the X have all equal chances of being chosen. Now, we're going to move into MATLAB to show how we can solve this Monte Carlo integration problem using numerical approaches. Let's program the Monte Carlo integration calculation in MATLAB. We start off with the equation that we want to integrate over, and we integrate from A to B. I've defined the equation here as an anonymous function. You can tell because of the at x notation. The equation is y equals 10 plus 5 times sine of 5x. Then I define some initial parameters. n is going to be the number of points to generate randomly. And I have this set to 10,000. I have the lower limit of the integral for the x, which is 2, and the upper limit is 4. So I'm evaluating this equation from 2 to 4. That's the integral we're going to calculate. Then we have to define the upper value for the y. y will range from 0 to this value. I want this upper y value to be a portion greater than the maximum y value possible from the equation. To do this, I'm first going to generate a matrix of values using linspace of A to B. This gives us 100 values between A and B, which are these input parameters. Then, I'm giving this matrix as the argument to our function f, the anonymous function. That will give us an output of all the y values. The input, all the x values, f gives us all the y values. 
I'm then taking the maximum of all those y values, grabbing the largest one, and multiplying it by 1.4. This value is arbitrary, but it should be greater than 1 to ensure that the upper y bound is greater than the largest possible y value from our equation. Then it comes to generating the actual points. This is the real meat of the algorithm. We're going to do this n number of times because we've defined the number of points that we want to generate randomly. And then it comes to the random generation, an x value and a y value. For the x value, I want a random value between a and b. I'm using the rand1 because I want this to be a continuous random distribution, not just a single integer value. Rand1 just gives us a value between 0 and 1. I want to go between 2 and 4. If I add a to this and do rand1 plus 2, I'll get values between 2 and 3. But I want to go between 2 and 4. If I scale this, say multiply this by 2, and do rand1 times 2, I now get values between 0 and 2. And thus, if I did rand1 times 2 plus 2, I would get random values between 2 and 4. And that's exactly what this will do for a given a and b. For the y value, I simply want a random value between 0 and m. I scale the 0 to 1, multiplying it by m, and this will give out random values from 0 to m. Excellent. So now we store an x value and a y value at random at the start of each loop, and that will be our dot or the point that we're generating. We then have to compare that random value against the value of the curve at that x value. So we calculate the y value at that point, we'll call it f of x, and we use our x val as the input. Now we have an f of x, which is the point on the curve, and we have our random point. We need to compare these values as we do here. If our y value is less than the f of x, this calculated value, then we're underneath the curve. That's what we want to count, the values underneath the curve. These are the blue dots that we saw previously in the PowerPoint explanation. If that's the case, we're going to create a matrix called under, and now we're storing the x values and the y values. We want to save that point into the under matrix, so later we have all the values that were under the curve. Note that I'm storing the x values in column 1 and the y values in column 2, and I'm using the index to move down rows as I go. When y is greater than or equal to the f of x calculated value, then we drop into this else statement here. Now we're above the curve. The y value is greater than the curve value f of x. In that case, we store the x value and the y value into a matrix called above. And above will now store all the red dots that fall above the curve. I then end that logic statement, and I end the loop. Let's run this, and then check the output. Let's first look at under. If we pull this up and scroll to the top, we'll see some interesting behavior. Y is the first value zero. And this might be different for you because we're using random values. But why are there zeros spread throughout the matrix? As the loop went, we can assume here 
that the first value that came through ended up in this case. And we stored a value in the above matrix. On the second loop, it came through and we ended up in this case. And we stored a value in the under matrix, but I was equal to two, which is why we have a value in the second row. When we saved that value, MATLAB saw, okay, we need a value in the second row, but for there to exist things in the second row, we have to have something in the first row, which is why MATLAB autofills with zeros. We want to get rid of these zeros to have a clean list of only the points that landed here and not including the zeros. To get rid of them, we're going to use the non-zeros function. This is a very simple function. You simply provide a one by n dimension array and it will spit out a one by n dimension array, but removing all these zero values. I do this with the first column and the second column, saving it to a new under two matrix going from under one to under two, and I do the same thing with the above. Now we have above two coming from the above one, non-zeros all over. The zeros have now been removed. If we run this and then take a look at under two, here we have a nice clean matrix with no zeros. The next step is to plot this. We'll want to plot the first column versus the second column because that's the X and the Y values. Here we plot the first versus the second column for the above values. We'll hold on and then plot the under values, give it a title, provide a legend. We plot this. And now we're going to see that familiar Monte Carlo integration visualization. Now that we've generated a nice plot, we have to finish the actual Monte Carlo method and calculate the integral. To do this, we take the number of points that are under the curve and we can count these essentially using the length function which will tell us how many values are in under two. We divide this by the total number of points we generated and then multiply it by the region that we're in, which is of the size M times B minus A. We run this and now we actually get our Monte Carlo integral out. Every time you run this, you will receive a different answer due to the randomness of values that are generated in the region. MATLAB also has internal numerical methods that it uses to calculate an integral. We can use this as our ground truth value. The function is called integral. You provide it the anonymous function we created and the bounds of the X, A, and B. Now we have a Monte Carlo integral and a MATLAB integral using MATLAB's built-in integral function which is also using some form of numerical methods. We can calculate a percent error if we take the MATLAB integral to be true and our value to be more experimental, get the absolute value of the difference between the MATLAB and the Monte Carlo, and then divide by the MATLAB multiplying by 100. And look at this, a beautiful graph, Monte Carlo integral, MATLAB integral, and we're only off by just over 1%, all coming from that randomness. This is crazy cool. The power in this is that now you can take this script and use it for any equation. All you have to do is change the anonymous function. This function we have right now could be reasonably integrated, but what about a function like e to the x times x squared times the square root of e to the x 
right? Something really difficult to calculate. If we run this, what's the error here? Where did I go wrong in this equation? You'll notice we have to do dot multiplication here in order to do element-wise operations. Still not good enough yet. We have to add one more dot between the square root calculation. And now we run evenly. But look at this, a whole other equation. This is extremely difficult to integrate, but we're able to get a nice integral calculation and a beautiful graph. This is how you should build your scripts, by the way, allowing everything to calculate itself and change minimal inputs in order to perform a completely different calculation. That's a strong program, and that's what makes you a strong programmer. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video on how we can do an integral using randomness and Monte Carlo's method on real world integration problems that you would not be able to solve with pen and paper.